An electronic flight bag EFB is an electronic information management device that helps flight crews perform flight management tasks more easily and efficiently with less paper. It is a general-purpose computing platform intended to reduce, or replace, paper-based reference material often found in the pilot's carry-on flight bag, including the aircraft operating manual, flight crew operating manual, and navigational charts including moving map for air and ground operations. In addition, the EFB can host purpose-built software applications to automate other functions normally conducted by hand, such as performance takeoff calculations. The EFB gets its name from the traditional pilot's flight bag, which is typically a heavy, up to 40 pounds, 18 kilograms or more, documents bag that pilots carry to the cockpit. The electronic flight bag is the replacement of those documents in a digital format. EFB weights are typically 1 to 5 pounds, 0.5 to 2.2 kilograms, about the same as a laptop computer and a fraction of the weight and volume of the paper publications. Common benefits include, weight savings over traditional flight bag, reduced medical claims from handling traditional flight bags, reduced cost, and increased efficiency by reducing or eliminating paper processes. There are also claims of increased safety and reducing pilot workload. Electronic flight bag applications were developed to provide a solution to the everyday problems facing pilots including constantly changing NOTAM information, changing weather patterns, airport issues and delays by providing all the information required for a flight at the touch of a button. The electronic flight bag allows aircrews access to the briefing pack which includes accurate, reliable, up-to-the-minute data about the operational flight plan, weather conditions and NOTAM alerts. Crews can capture all actuals, incidents, delays, fuel, or route changes during a flight. According to the FAA's advisory circular AC no. 120 to 76 C an electronic flight bag is an electronic display system intended primarily for cockpit flight deck or cabin use there are also militarized variants with secure data storage night vision goggle compatible lighting environmental hardening and military specific applications and data EFB devices can display a variety of aviation data or perform basic calculations including performance data and fuel calculations. In the past, some of these functions were traditionally accomplished using paper references or were based on data provided to the flight crew by an airline's flight dispatch crew. For large and turbine aircraft, FAR 91.503 requires the presence of navigational charts on the airplane. If an operator's sole source of navigational chart information is contained on an EFB, the operator must demonstrate the EFB will continue to operate throughout a decompression event, and thereafter, regardless of altitude. The only way to achieve this capability is by using a solid state drive or a standard rotating mass drive in a sealed enclosure. Topic: History. The earliest EFB precursors came from individual pilots in the early 1990s who used their personal laptops and common software such as spreadsheets and word processing applications to perform such functions as weight and balance calculations and filling out operational forms. One of the earliest and broadest EFB implementations was in 1991 when FedEx deployed their airport performance laptop computer to carry out aircraft performance calculations on the aircraft this was a commercial off-the-shelf computer and was considered portable. In addition, FedEx also began deploying pilot access terminals on their airplane in the mid-1990s. 
These later devices were common laptops that used a certified docking station on the airplanes to connect to power and data interfaces. In 1996, Aero Lloyd, a German carrier, introduced two laptops to compute the performance and access the documentation. The system called FMD Flight Management Desktop permits Aero Lloyd to remove all the documentation and RTOW in paper from the cockpit with the Luftfahrt Bundesamt German Civil Aviation Authority agreement. Other companies, including Southwest, followed with carry on performance computers, but they remained on the airplane as a practical matter. JetBlue took a different approach by converting all of its operations documents to electronic format and distributing them over a network to laptop computers that were issued to pilots versus to the airplane. The first true EFB, designed specifically to replace a pilot's entire kit bag, was patented by Angela Masson as the Electronic Kit Bag in 1999. In 2005, the first commercial Class II EFB STC STC no ST AT was issued to Avionics Support Group, Inc. that covered the installation of provisions for the deployment of the Navaero TBAGC-22 EFB computer and touchscreen display system. The installation was performed on a Miami Air Boeing B737NG. The EFB data was updated using a terminal wireless unit TWLU installed at Miami Air's facility, that enabled the EFB to update only the files that had changed on the server. In 2006 MyTravel a UK charter operation now merged with Thomas Cook Airline became the first to deploy an electronic tech log using GPRS communication, replacing the paper process. Thomas Cook has several years of successful operational experience of an EFB focused on its UK fleet. In 2009, Continental Airlines successfully completed the world's first flight using Jeppesen Airport Surface Area Moving Map AMM showing own ship position on a Class II electronic flight bag platform, which was the Navaero TBAGC-22 EFB system. The AMM application uses a high-resolution database to dynamically render maps of the airport. Through the use of GPS technology, the application show pilots their position own ship on the airport surface map. The result is much improved positional, situational awareness among flight crews which is a critical safety factor for reducing runway incursions during ground operations especially at busy commercial airports with complex runway and taxiway layouts. The STC under which the Navarro EFB system was deployed STO2161LA also provided for the dual EFB systems to be cross-connected which allowed for the airport moving map to be shared or pushed from one EFB system to the other. As personal computing technology became more compact and powerful, EFBs became capable of storing all the aeronautical charts for the entire world on a single 3-pound computer, compared to the 80 pounds of paper normally required for worldwide paper charts. New technologies such as real-time satellite weather and integration with GPS have further expanded the capabilities of electronic flight bags. However, for large commercial airlines, the primary problem with EFB systems is not the hardware on the aircraft, but the means to reliably and efficiently distribute content updates to the airplane. While the adoption rate of the electronic flight bag technology has been slow among large scheduled air carriers, corporate operators have been rapidly deploying EFBs since 1999 due to reduced regulatory burden and easier cost justification. The Air Force Special Operations Command purchased an initial supply of over 3,000 iPad-based EFBs which were globally fielded in July 2012. 
In a similar acquisition, Air Mobility Command initiated a contract for up to 18,000 iPad-based EFBs. The Air Force Special Operations Command internally developed a secure method of transferring the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency's monthly flight information publications dataset to all its users worldwide. Both major commands MAJCOMs, pursued independent efforts to ensure continuous ops for their aircrew. After trialing iPads as EFBs in 2011, Delta Airlines announced in August 2013 it would roll out Microsoft Surface 2 devices to its pilots, replacing a policy allowing pilots to use personal tablets as EFBs. Delta planned to roll out the tablet to all of its pilots by May 2014, after FAA approval in February. Early risk of breakage to iPads used as EFBs was addressed through rugged case design. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Hardware classes. Electronic flight bags are divided into three hardware classes and three software types. Reference, FAA Advisory Circular AC 120-76D, ASA Acceptable Means of Compliance AMC 20-25, ICAO Document 10020, EFB Manual, and FAA Order 8900.1 Inspector Handbook especially. Volume 4 Chap 15 for the most recent and accurate descriptions. Note, with the forthcoming release of AC 120-76D, the categorization of electronic flight bag hardware into classes below will be retired. Going forward, EFB S will simply be categorized as portable or installed. Portable can be considered to consolidate the previous class 1 and 2 distinctions, while installed is equivalent to class 3. These simplifications made to reduce confusion and to harmonize with already released ASA and ICAO guidance. EFB hardware classes include Class 1 standard commercial off-the-shelf equipment such as laptops or handheld electronic devices. These devices are used as loose equipment and are typically stowed during critical phases of flight. A Class 1 EFB is considered a portable electronic device PED. Class 1 EFBs, such as cockpit iPads, may be used to display Type B applications in critical phases of flight provided that they are secured and viewable. Class 2 also portable electronic devices, and range from modified COTS equipment to purpose-built devices. Mounting, power, ship's power as primary, or data connectivity of an EFB typically requires the application of an STC, type certificate or amended type certificate. Ref. FAA Order 8900.1 Class 3 considered installed equipment and subject to airworthiness requirements and, unlike PEDs, they must be under design control. The hardware is subject to a limited number of RTCA D0160E requirements for non-essential equipment, typical crash safety and conducted and radiated emissions testing. Class 3 EFBs are typically installed under STC or other airworthiness approval. Topic: <laughs> Applications. <laughs> The EFB may host a wide array of applications, categorized in three software categories. Reference AC 120-76 as amended, for an actual list of examples. Type A Static applications, such as document viewer, PDF, HTML, XML formats. Flight crew operating manuals, and other printed documents like airport NOTAM Type B 
static or dynamic electronic charts to include though not requiring panning, zooming, and scrolling, AC 120-76, Appendix B Type C For example, airport moving map functionality deployed under a technical standard order authorization, and some elements of an automatic dependent surveillance broadcast system note, Type C applications are subject to airworthiness requirements and as such must be developed in conformance with DO 178, ED 12 objectives. Type C applications must run on Class III EFB. Note, with the forthcoming release of AC 120-76D, reference to Type C applications will be removed, and their functionality will no longer be recognized as EFB functions. Regulations. According to the FAA, Class 1, Class 2 and Class 3 EFB may act as a substitute for the paper manuals that pilots are otherwise required to carry with them. While Part 91 operators, those not flying for hire, including private and corporate operators, can use their pilot in command pick authority to approve the use of Class 1 and Class 2 EFBs, which are PEDs, operator with OPSPEX Part 135, Part 121, must seek operational approval through the OPSPEX process. EFB users and installers should be aware of recent, clarified guidance for FAA inspectors. Draft guidance pertaining to EFB operational authorization and airworthiness, certification requirements is maintained by the FAA, clarifying the intent of FAA Advisory Circular AC 120-76A. New Draft Inspector Handbook guidance includes the following requirements. PEDs used in a Class 1 or Class 2 configuration must meet the rapid decompression testing requirements of standard RTC AD0160E. Any data connectivity of PEDs used in a Class 1 or Class 2 configuration to aircraft systems shall be performed in accordance with a supplemental type certificate, type certificate or amended type certificate. Any mounting or attachment of PEDs used in a Class 1 or Class 2 configuration to the aircraft shall be performed in accordance with a supplemental type certificate, type certificate or amended type certificate. Electronic chart software, the display of own ship position, spotter, on the ground must meet the requirements of AC 120-76C and or TSOC 165. Electronic chart software, the display of own ship position in flight is prohibited on Class 1 or 2 configurations. <laughs> 